Coming up on Smart Tech today, Matthew Casanelli and I start things out with a listicle. That's right, we're talking about work from home products that are actually useful. Then we talk about Wink. Yes, Wink is back and this time it's serious. It is making its subscription service a real deal. We'll round things out with a summary of the Hey G Google event and talk about our picks of the week. All that and so much more coming up on Smart Tech today. Smart Tech Today is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Smart Tech Today is brought to you by Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time. Get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash STT and using the promo code STT at checkout. Welcome back to Smart Tech Today, where we explain the exciting, the dynamic, and the sometimes confusing subject that is the Internet of Things and surrounding smart tech. I am Micah Sargent. And I am Matthew Casanelli. Hello, hello, Micah. How are you doing? I am doing peachy keen. How are you? <laughs> doing good. <laughs> Got good, my good. espresso half gone, uh-huh. and I am ready to go. Got my Gen 1... Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, Bright, yeah, white. Yeah. Can't even tell. Gen 1 Ember Mug with... Uh, look at, th- this used to be white. This is no longer white. <laughs> uh, coffee, so it's keeping this little bit of coffee hot. And now it's gone. All right. Um, we've got some stuff to talk about. And it starts with work from home products. 27 work from home products people are swearing by in quarantine. Yes, folks, you heard that right. It's a listicle and we are talking about it here. Uh, It's from BuzzFeed. And frankly, I hate these, this specific (laughs) brand of article. And the reason I hate this specific brand of article is because I just go through and say, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. (laughs) There's so many smart things in this piece. I want I want it all. So tell me about it. What uh, what kind of did you see in this article that really stood out to you and how much of it are you using now in your uh, home? I haven't ordered any yet, but I'm very seriously considering the soundproofing strip that you put mm-hmm. around your door. That was the one that was like, oh, no. OK, like what? <laughs> because even I live in I, I, we've covered this on the show before, but. This home is like 120 years old or something around there. I'm pretty sure at least maybe the doors have been updated since it was built, but there's giant gaps under the doors and things like that. So this would definitely be my number one pick there. The butt cushion is probably another because we have (laughs) my girlfriend and I before every single show, we switch chairs because we have one good office chair in the space and so oh, when no. i need to like use it we have another one in another space but it, we just like for specific uses we have to swap it around and that other chair is wooden and it's pretty much like i mean at least i get my stand goal because i have to stand up at least once an hour otherwise <laughs> i can feel it in my body um <laughs> so i might be getting that what about you yeah did you see anything um well, so there are a few things on here that I would disagree with. Uh, for example, the yeah. smart plug. It's, you know, a, a random company that I've never heard of. And so I would not recommend someone uh, go for that product. Fair. But, um, uh, you know, there's there's still a lot of good stuff on here, including um, the – well, now I've got to find it again. What was it? It kind of stood out to me. Uh, bu- 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 Footrest looks good. It was yeah. The footrest is good. Oh, it was the they water have- bottle. Um, it's not a smart water bottle by any means, but it's a time marked water bottle, and so it says, you know, buy this 
point in time, you should have consumed this much water so that you can have, you know, the the overall recommended uh, value of water that you're supposed or amount of water that you're supposed to have in a given day. I think that's fantastic, uh, particularly if we all are spending a lot of time at our computers or spending a lot of time, you know, doing the things that we do and maybe aren't keeping track of our water intake. Uh, this helps you kind of keep up to date, keep reminded about it. So I, and it's, it's a pretty looking water bottle as well. Um, which helps in my mind because, you know, I want to sort of keep it by me, keep it, uh, showing it off and everything like that. Cause I mostly just use, um, the, the whole foods, pasta that comes in a jar. It comes in these fantastic mason jars. Um, mm -hmm. And so I will regularly remove the label and uh, wash them. And then I use them to hold my water, or in this case, it's Spindrift sparkling lemon water. Um, but yeah, these are my, you know, day to day water consumption devices. Uh, right. but I really like that water bottle. It's really pretty. And like yeah. I said, with it telling you, okay, you know, by this time you should have had this much water. That's helpful because I think that I do take in quite a bit of water in a day. Um, I'm a pretty heavy water drinker, but to know for sure that, you know, you're, you're on track throughout the day is kind of nice. Yeah. There is a, uh, also the, Mr. Coffee alternative to your hundred dollar <laughs> more expensive mug bougie, thing that's nonsense. But yours yeah. is I like the I was just thinking about how on the Amazon page for the Mr. Coffee warmer, there's a link to another one that looks like a chi charger. And I was just imagining oh. having that side by side with my chi charger and then you so then put you your phone down on the wrong spot. Yeah, <laughs> so and then your like, phone oh, lights maybe, on fire. Right. Maybe a dedicated device can prevent <laughs> unwanted burns <laughs> yes prevent unwanted burns i assume that's too the benefit of your thing fires. is that it yeah it's like it never actually burns you so yeah, yeah. i mean i don't fair. know i included this list especially just because i don't think i've looked at a single buzzfeed list in a long time but and there's this some one called you out it, i mean just the work from home stuff is like still just as important as ever and taking care of yourself is always important too so Maybe grab Agreed. something off of there. Yeah, just not the smart plugs, please. Um, this this article I was really excited to see from the wire cutter because honestly, this is something that I think about a lot. Uh, you have different resources out there, different uh, journalists or or tech enthusiasts who review a lot of different products, but it's not the same as choosing what you truly see as the devices that you want to use in your own home. So the wire cutter published an article called the smart home devices, our expert actually uses at home. And that is exactly what it sounds like. It is a list of the stuff that the person uses in their own home, uh, and you know, can, can swear by in that way because they, like them and they they're useful i saw there, there are some interesting choices on here and uh you know there are some things the wise plug is great uh but it kind of depends on sort of your home your own home setup what makes more sense for you but regardless of that i thought it was interesting to see kind of somebody else who is constantly digging into this stuff what they choose to make their devices at home Mm -hmm. I was disappointed because I only had two things on here out of all of them. Although I do have the alternatives. Um, the TP-Link Casa Smart Outdoor Plug that's powering the lights that we set up just recently. And then oh. like the Philips Hue Color Smart, smart Bulbs. Um, and I have, I but in general, I have almost one alternative off of every single thing they would recommend. And I'm still, the Wise Cam, I think maybe this is like the... The trigger for it's like okay i'll probably get that one yeah it's such a good price frankly um mm -hmm. i have one and it's fine um you know it's not superb by any means and it's not meant to be it's it's how to add uh security to your home a security camera to your home without breaking the bank frankly uh and so in that way it's it's a really good device and as we had mentioned before it can double as a webcam if you end up needing one of those um 
Arlo is one that I've always kept my eye on. There's the Arlo Pro security camera, but then there's also the Arlo that's for a, as a works as a baby monitor, which is super cool. Um, I have to say, one of the things that makes me super happy that's on the list is the Lutron Caseta uh, wireless in wall dimmer. So, hands down, Lutron Caseta is the best choice you can make when it comes to in wall. Uh, lighting control and fan control for your home if, if you're trying to go for the smart route. Uh, these devices are made by a company who has a long history in offering in-wall switches. The Lutron Caseta line uses a bridge uh, that, that connects to your, your home router. And so that typically, and in this case means that you have instant um, access and instant, uh, what is the word, low latency controls for all of the devices in your home. They've been completely, you know, no issues with connection where some of the other ones end up having that issue. So it's like the, and this is this is a, the utmost compliment, it's like the Philips Hue of in-wall solutions for lighting and fan control nice. in your home. Uh, so yeah, I I think it's fantastic. Um and yeah, so one of the things that it said in the article, I installed the Lutron Caseta wireless in-wall dimmer because it's easy to use. And even my husband, as a licensed electrician, knows that Lutron puts out reliable, well-built products. Um, I remember in my home back in Springfield, Missouri, um, I had these for almost all of the lights in my house. But one of my favorite things was that the front yard and the backyard uh, the switches, I replace them with the Lutron Caseta switches so that when the sun set, the light in the front yard and the light in the backyard would turn on. And when the sun rose in the morning, then the light in the front yard and the backyard would turn off. Uh, mm -hmm. so it was just a nice automatic, uh, situation that I had set up that made it so that I felt, you know, a little more safe or whatever, you know, you want to, you want to put there. Um, it was great. So yeah, I, I was happy to see that on this list because I think that it doesn't get as much attention because of the fact that it's a little bit more difficult to uh, install in wall switches and that kind of, you know, that process is a little more difficult, but mm -hmm. it is, uh, I think, an excellent choice if you have the wherewithal to do so. It's totally one of those stage of life recommendations where if you're like under a certain age, Nobody's going to recommend it because they live in apartments or things like that. So yes. for homeowners, it's definitely a good recommendation. Absolutely. Uh, you you remember Wink, right? Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> so a while back, uh, it's been a little while now, we reported on Wink um, no longer allowing folks to use its service without paying a subscription. So a long time ago, Wink came around and it said, hey, You've got all these different devices that communicate using different types of, of, of setups, different frameworks or different um, communication protocols, and it gets difficult. You might need a bridge for this and a hub for that and a, a speaker for this and an echo for that, and it is not an easy thing to do. So Wink said, let's put all those different radios and protocol types within one device and let you use that as the central control hub for your home. A brilliant idea. But the company set things up so that the way that it made money was through the purchase of its hardware. So the purchase of the Wink Hub and surrounding devices. Well, they realized that the only way they were going to be able to stay open was if they found a new source of income and revenue. And the way that it said it was going to do that was by making what was previously a free service into one that was going to cost you $4.99 a month. As you might expect, taking something away from someone after you have already given it to them did not go over well. And many a Wink user said, OK, bye. Uh, Wink tried to respond by saying, oh, wait, hold on. We'll, we're not going to we're not going to start charging you a subscription just yet. So you've got some time to sort of get ready for that. And they kept doing it over and over again and delaying and delaying <laughs> and delaying and delaying. And delaying with sort of, uh, you know, some features locked behind a paywall and current features available to those to use for free. But now Wink says, okay, we've delayed, we've delayed. On July 27th, we will officially enforce the subscription program. So if you don't, 
have the subscription by that point, then you will no longer be able to control all your devices using that Wink Hub that you purchased. <sighs> what would you wager the, this actually happening that day? <laughs> um, I think it will happen this time because yeah. of the delays that have already taken place. Fair, I yeah. think that it will happen this time. I just, I feel bad for Wink, honestly. I, yeah. Um, because I, I don't know, it's just, it's sad that they didn't have this thought in the first place. Because if they had, this wouldn't be an issue. If if from the get-go they said, look, we've got to keep uh, working with new protocols, we've got to, you know, learn new APIs, we've got to do all this work, and how do we pay our developers uh, and our engineers to do this if we don't con- have a continuous source of revenue coming in? We are doing a service where you buy the thing, and maybe at a reduced price, and then you pay a subscription each month. If they'd done that from the get-go, there would not be an issue. And so I just kind of feel bad that they did not have that that thought in the first place. It kind of it kind of stinks. But hopefully, I don't know. I don't know uh, how to feel now. I was going to say hopefully new customers to the Wink platform will, you know, they'll be coming into yeah. things with this new knowledge of this is how the way that things are. But at the same time that I feel bad for Wink itself, I also feel bad for the customers who up till now could rely on Wink to be their platform of use for controlling their different devices. Yeah, it's hard to tell because, I mean, in theory, they'll have the funds to continue, but also just losing some of the trust of your customers can be a big hit and that can take companies down some time and just it's definitely a bit of a a bit of a PR stumble you you could say because they <laughs> I mean it was in May and then a week later they were like oh we're delaying it again and now it's months later and mm-hmm. the I mean of course never read the comments on the articles but people oh, are just <laughs> like what wink who or <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's yeah, pretty See, good. But, um, I have a Wink Hub um, yeah. and I've had one for years. But even when I first got, it was a, a review or it was a sample. Um, so the company or the company that represented them via PR sent me a Wink Hub and I, you know, did I, I tried it out and connected some devices to it. And I believe I wrote a review on iMore on it ages ago. But I... And, and I'm sure I would have noted this in the piece. It's like all of the devices that I have already have means of connection. So I don't need this to do that connection. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't need the Wink Hub to provide for the secure, you know, pr- provide the the communication because I'm already covered. So I think that, you know, the big thing that Wink is trying to do now is sort of sell itself first and foremost as a security system. Uh, Wink itself has hardware, including um, the Wink motion sensor, the Wink door and window sensor, and a Wink siren and chime. And so when it has those devices, uh, you know, then it can say, hey, buy this kit and you have a home security system. Yeah, called Wink Lookout. So maybe there's a future for Wink when yeah. it is positioned as this uh, type of device. But That's fair because even taking that and if you – they also then have the brands that they connect with. So mm-hmm. it does become a hub unto like other devices in addition to just the security part. So I think we, we have been <laughs> beating them up a little bit for this but – They'll probably lose some customers, but like you said, I think in the future, it could still be a solid platform. I mean, I'm curious, what are you going to do? Are you, do you, is it, is yours still functional or do you need to upgrade or? Oh, I'm not, I mean, like I said, I have not, it's not been plugged in. It just sits there. It's so I plugged it in and then I unplugged it because I have other ways to connect to those devices. So I just have this relic of a bygone era, in my opinion, um, for this. It's a cool looking mm-hmm. thing, the Wink Hub 2. It looks cool. Uh, it yeah. kind of reminds me of that new PlayStation that's coming out. It's sort of tall and and slightly 
<laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> totally know. Curved. <laughs> yeah. And so in that way, it's kind of a cool techie thing, but I have no use for it because my devices, my smart home devices connect in different ways that don't require this go between. Um, so Would- I don't know. I don't know that I can responsibly suggest that anyone new take on this platform as their platform of choice, given that chip AKA P Choip is, is, you know, coming eventually. And in the mm-hmm. meantime, you have, uh, sort of protocols from the, the big three players in the space, Amazon, Apple, and Google. Why would I say go use Wink's platform when the company is floundering right now and may eventually be one that mm-hmm. doesn't exist at all? Because why do we need to have it whenever you can sort of connect to these devices, uh, through less expensive and more reliable ways? It sounded like you went from being like, they're still pretty legit. There's a good reason for them to back to like, no, this is pointless. But I guess I'm curious too, if you, if you cut out the iPhone aspect, does that still, are you still covered by everything? Because I think that's something that we often forget about is if you don't have the home kit set up, maybe you do still need something like this. Uh, Google, the Google Assistant yeah. with everything new that's coming that way. No, you don't need yeah, to have this. Um, and Amazon, if you've got one of the uh, Echo Plus, I think they're called, uh, Echo Pro devices, then you also don't need this. Um, uh, so what I was saying before is more for the customers that want to stay you know, part of this platform and for new people who come across Wink and decide that this is where they want to go, on their own, you know, they make those decisions, then hopefully this will be a good system for them. But if someone were to come to me and ask, how do I, you know, what do I want to do in terms of getting a home set up going? I'm not going to lead them to wink because it's an unnecessary yeah. middleman, in my opinion. Hmm. Unnecessary okay. middle person, I guess. Fair. Um, well. <laughs> wink, I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, here's a wink and a and a wave and a finger cross. I hope <laughs> things work out for you as they need to. Um, yeah, let's move on before I say things that are not nice about sure. work. Any more things, I guess. <laughs> Tell me about series suggestions, Matthew. Yes, this is um, one of the interesting beta features. This is, I uh, this is smart tech adjacent adjacent and i part of the reason is i have a tie-in to it um but i also just want to talk about it because it's cool there's a new widget that you can put onto iphone home screens that's a grid of eight app spaces where it'll suggest it'll use the series suggestions feature to recommend apps that you would likely use and this has always been in the widget screen or in spotlight search it'll recommend those but now Along with the new home screen widgets, you can have a tile of what'll just be suggested apps. Um, and so I've, I'm curious if you've used this first of all, and then I've also been, I'm pretty sure, don't care about my home screen anymore. Like I've gotten to the point where I just open it and it tells me which apps are there, and I use them. So I'm, I'm fascinated to hear your experience if you've set it up so far. Um, so I, in the past did not like Siri suggestions, uh, the, the app suggestions where I would swipe down because I've not really, I mean, I use my home screen and have used my home screen ostensibly for a while, but the fact is, uh, most of the time, the way that I'm accessing apps is I unlock my phone, I swipe down on the screen and use spotlight to find the app that I'm looking for. I had Mm -hmm. everything stored in folders on the second screen, the second home screen, the main home screen had my most used apps so that I could just tap on them. And then a row of folders up top where the other most used apps were. And the second page was just folders listed a, a through Z. Uh, and it, there was no, there was no organization to them. It's not as if all the A apps were an A or anything like that, because I don't need to see those apps. I know what app I'm looking for. I just type it in. So now that second screen is not a screen at all because of iOS 14's new app library feature. So those home screens are hidden and I can find the app using the app library search. Um, I will say you don't even tap on the, you don't tap on the app library icons or anything. I mean, I, I I actually don't like that part of it um, (laughs) because 
that part of it, it, it feels almost like it's a, it's, it feels like it's a lie, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. It's um, what I would expect to show up in recent. If I just have downloaded an app, then I would think that, that would be the most recent thing to show up in recent. And it could be a bug, uh, just to be clear. But there have been times when I've gone to the app store, downloaded an app, and then it's not right there in the recently, you know, recent app section, um, which is annoying because then I have to go search for it or whatever. But so I don't use that at all. I, I don't even really swipe over to the to swipe to the left to get to the right to see the app library search, I still just swipe mm -hmm. down from the top to use the spotlight. Now, whenever I would do that, there would be the series suggestions that pop up right below that. And there were times when it was <laughs> accurate. Most of the time it was when I was trying to access Audible at night. And so I would know, uh, hey, you're probably looking for Audible, aren't you? And I'd say, oh, you got me there, iPhone. And I'd tap on Audible and start listening to my book. But outside of that, it wasn't that accurate. I will say that in iOS 14, whatever new juju they've worked out uh, to, to make the recommendations even better, it actually does seem to be better. So I might have to try doing that because right now my home screen, um, still a series of folders up top, A through H with my most used apps in them. And then below is a series of apps that I use all the time. So they are quite literally just the icons there. Mm -hmm. Um but in the middle, I have a calendar, the calendar widget. Uh, that said, I kind of like this idea of using the Siri suggestions as the widget uh, on the home screen just to see if that that works. But at the same time, I'm also nervous about making any changes to my home screen because I, yeah. I like how it is right now. That's fair. Take a screenshot or something. Um, that's always helpful. But I think no, the, that's the oh, you mean thing. okay? I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah just so to I don't forget how it's set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good point. Um, what I've taken to is on the second screen, you can stack the, or not stack, but you can put three of them on the screen. And then when you, I mean, I, I assume it's just a beta thing, but then once you refresh, they all are different. So I have an entirely second home screen that I haven't put together at oh. all. That's just recommended apps. And it's Wait, like... So I, I think it's like every single thing I've used today, which is amazing. <laughs> and it looks like they're just, it looks like they're just apps. It's just it, home it screen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, that's kind of cool. And it's kind of fascinating. I was talking with someone else on Twitter that he was just like, oh, my muscle memory. And I was like, I have none anymore. I just look at what's there and then tap it if it's the one that I want. And it's pretty good at suggesting it. So it's kind of fascinating. I think All I right, just wanted to talk about this because... It, it is smart tech type stuff. And even I think a big thing is with iOS 14 is going to be apps that you wouldn't have used before. If I am messing around with the Amazon Echo app, I'll say, even though that's not the title of it, um, then it'll like show up more often and I can get back to it and actually use these apps that are buried in those folders normally. I think that's <sighs> app library sort of does that. And it, mm -hmm. it has a grid of smaller icons so you can see more and remember, oh, yeah, I have these apps too. But I think the suggestions thing, it's just where you already are when you're interacting with your apps. So I think that's going to be a fascinating, fascinating addition there. Yeah, TBH, I'm feeling kind of called out. It's it, whenever I, so I've, I've done this and now I'm like, you know too much about me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it I always shows this. me Twitter because it's. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't it knows, want it to be. <laughs> Instagram's there, DoorDash is there. <laughs> um uh the the health app is there, fantastic cal my calendar is there. Wow. Okay, I see you. Yeah. Okay. That's this cool. is kind of nice. I'm going to keep, yeah, so I've changed my second screen. I've got a smart stack at the top, uh, so it can be weather, it can be uh, featured photos, it can be the top news stories. But then below that, I've got two sets of Siri suggestions um, of, nice. of apps that I can, you know, pop into and see. So, I, yeah, wow. Hmm. The it one thing me. I want them to fix right now is if it could know which ones are being suggested on the other screen so that if I have one on the first screen and the second screen, it doesn't show any of the same apps or maybe yeah, even the widgets because that's the other thing is widgets are kind of now just yeah, like I don't need to keep the notes app on my home screen because I have the notes widget. So 
that whole thing is going to be fascinating. And I was thinking too, we should do a, a face off with Android and they, they're even, we'll talk about it later about the Google event, but there's going to be more ways to access home type things through mm-hmm. Android in by default. So that's going to be the home screen wars are heating up. <laughs> <laughs> indeed they are uh all righty let's see what's next oh uh the a l e x a iphone app uh can actually work hands free as long as you use siri <laughs> so siri gives a little hand over well, to uh <laughs> amazon's virtual assistant so that you can use both without having the the idea is that you want to be if if ALEXA is your virtual assistant of choice. You obviously want a way to be able to talk to that virtual assistant without having to open up your phone, do a tap here, do a tap there. Now you're able to get to that uh, through this uh, very special way. And who who but Matthew Casanelli could tell us how we go about doing this? Yeah, I mean, they. I do think... The article from 9 to 5 Mac that I'm referencing has made it, of course, they have to tie everything into Apple. But it is the main feature is in if you turn on a toggle in the settings app or in the settings of the Amazon app. Oh, God, I almost said it. Um, And you can have it just as long as the screen is open to that app. It can recognize your trigger phrases. I'm trying not to say it again of... um, and use your commands without just tapping on the little icon because that was one thing is you you basically anytime you wanted to use the app you'd have to open it and then tap again so their angle is that you have to have siri open it for you but of course now that we have that new accessibility back tap feature you could double tap and open up and then give your commands directly i wanted to say her name again but your amazon (laughs) commands So it's kind of like um, MKBHD had the clever thing because Google Assistant actually has a shortcut to trigger listening. So that would directly do it. But this is kind of like Amazon sneaking in with a little thing there. So I wonder if they will add a shortcut trigger too. Maybe I'll suggest that to them. But it's pretty clever. I mean, for people who actually like it, that was one thing that I've always been curious is do people use that when they can't? hear their echo or their echo can't hear them because I don't like to yell. So I don't know. I mean, did you ever use the echo app? (laughs) Um, I, the only reason that I use that app is for, uh, music control. Uh, so one of the things that I do, Mm -hmm. and I've talked about this before, uh, when I leave the house, the dogs will be listening for my imminent return. And that means that any sound that comes from outside that sounds like a car is a sound that will sort of set them off because they think, oh, that's home. And the way that I get by that is by turning on music uh, to sort of play in the background. And that it's, it's akin to what you do to uh, better help yourself fall asleep. If you play some sort of background noise, then your brain can focus on that and it is not as likely to be disturbed by uh, sudden sounds and things like that. So works the same in, in this principle. So because of that, I've got a set of Echo speakers. Um, it's a, an Echo Show and an Echo Studio, and those speakers are labeled as downstairs. And I use the ALEXA app to start playing the music downstairs, meaning that it plays across those two devices. So I'm in there quite a bit. Uh, well, not I guess not lately. I'm not in there quite a bit because I don't leave the house as much, but uh, certainly used to every day um, turn that on. And again, it boils down to the fact that I am too much of a control freak. And so I don't want to use my voice because I could technically say A-L-E-X-A, play classical music on my downstairs speakers or something like that, and it would work in theory. Uh, But I just want to know that it's going to work as soon as I do it so I can hit those buttons and make it happen as opposed to using my voice. So yeah, I definitely do that, but I don't know. I guess I I don't need my phone to control ALEXA whenever I've got an echo 
type device in each of the spaces in my house. Yeah. There's one there. There are cameraless camera less options in the bathrooms. There's one in my office. There's one in my bedroom. There's um, several downstairs. And so I guess the only place where there's not currently ALEXA, which maybe I'll have to fix that, is my garage. But every other place has ALEXA. And so there's not really a need to also make my phone um, do that as well. And I could even have it in the car if I wanted to because I've got an uh, Echo Auto which was the um, most miserable and ridiculous device that Amazon's ever made besides the um, Fire Phone. <laughs> That's a great... You just led me to... Does your car have CarPlay? Didn't you set you set up the whole thing, right? Or did that fall apart? That was for the studio. Um, uh, I don't have... I have not bought a um, CarPlay enabled thing for my car. Okay. Uh, she's just She's just too old to worry about that. It... it it <laughs> buying the CarPlay enabled device would cost more than my car is worth at this point. That's yeah, yeah. So it's um, just why I'll just wait till I get a new car at some point. Well, if you did and you needed it in the garage, when oh, I see CarPlay yeah. stops, the automation could open the app and then it could be listening for you. So it yeah, it actually is a solid solution. I might I'm gonna write that up. Yeah, you better write or that make up. a video or both. Okay, but see, mm -hmm. when you say make a video, then you don't do it until you make a video. Oh, but God. Then I, take oh, no. to make a I video have other then... videos. I have yeah, a video see? to make first. But... So don't don't. That's let why video I said I'm going to write it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let the video this be your threshold. Right. Uh, while Matthew writes that up, we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, I want to tell you about Casper, who is happily bringing you this episode of Smart Tech Today. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses at a fraction of the cost. Their products are cleverly designed to mimic human curves, providing supportive comfort for all kinds of bodies. Listen, you spend one third of your life sleeping, so you should be comfortable. Uh, yeah. There is mo There are multiple types of, of mattresses that Casper offers, including the original Casper mattress, which combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amount of both sink and bounce. Its breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. And with over 20,000 reviews and an average of 4.8 stars across Casper, Amazon, and Google, Casper is quickly becoming the internet's favorite mattress. Other mattresses include the Wave, the Essential, and the Hybrid. The Wave features a patent-pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body. The Essential has a streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night. And the Hybrid combines the pressure relief of the award-winning foam with durable yet gentle springs. Yes, springs are back and better than ever. Casper also offers a wide array of other products that I have picked up, including pillows and sheets to ensure an overall better sleep experience. I love my Casper mattress, my Casper sheets, my Casper pillows, all the Casper because it helps me sleep so well at night and has for years at this point. It's uh, certainly the first thing that I, you know, set up in a new home and I've, I've moved quite a bit in the past couple of years and in doing so, uh, the Casper has to come out and, uh, even if it's just got to go directly on the floor, that first night in my new home, I made sure it was there for me to sleep on because I don't want to sleep on an air mattress or something else whenever I've got my beautiful, wonderful Casper mattress. Well, maybe you're worried, you know, you're thinking about getting the Casper, but you aren't sure if it's the right choice for you. And you're wondering, you know, how usually I go into a, ca a, a mattress store, I can lay down, I can test it out. That's gross that you go into a mattress store and lay down on a mattress that other people have laid down on. You don't have to worry about that with Casper because you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. And Casper offers free shipping and painless returns to the US and Canada. So, you can, you can get a Casper mattress today. You can save $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash STT and using the code STT at checkout. That's $100 off select mattresses by going to casper.com slash STT and entering the code STT at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Our thanks to Casper for sponsoring this week's episode of Smart Tech Today. All righty. Up next, Google Plus 
is gone after its mobile apps have been rebranded as some other product that will probably be gone at some point. Google Currents. Sorry, was that too much editorializing? Maybe it wasn't too much <laughs> editorializing. Oh, the short-lived and ever-interesting Google Plus. Uh, rest in peace. Pour one out for my homies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now enterprise users can use Google Currents, which is basically Google Plus, but for enterprise users. Um it, I, I don't know <laughs> what to say, honestly. Uh, if you have a G Suite account, then you can use Currents, um, which that almost sounded like C-U-R-R-A-N-T-S. And now I kind of want some Currents. Uh, mm -hmm. But Currents uh, is an app that lets you have discussions and interactions within an organization. And so it's basically an internalized social network that is Google Plus, but uh, it's just being rebranded. Goodbye, Google Plus, and hello, <laughs> Google Currents, for those who have it. And for a second I, time. <laughs> did you ever use Google Plus? Oh, oh, I did. Uh, I do think Google Plus is what got me into social media. And so... In Whoa, many ways, hold on. Can you say that one be, more time, but louder? It could be why I'm here today. Really, uh, it you is. Said, who I am, who I am, because of Google. <laughs> no. Google um, Plus got you into social <laughs> networking. Is that what you said? <laughs> oh God, they're zooming in on my face. I can't this tell if that's you have sarcasm <laughs> or are you no, being it serious. Was, uh, it was half sarcasm. It's mostly sarcasm, but I definitely. I was just a budding social media person. I don't know, community manager type of thing. That was what my job was before I became a social media analyst. And then I went to workflow and pretty much lucked out on everything there. Um, but uh, um, it was just brand new. And at the time, we didn't know it was going to be terrible. So it was like, oh, this is cool. Here's a new platform. That was kind of the thing is any new platform. There was just tons of them all the time and it was exciting. And I maybe was a little less jaded in life. Um, <laughs> it's a, It's been a while since Google's been around. And it it has also, I should say, it, it was technically shut down last year. But this is like the end of any sort of branding of it. Um, but just like this, I remember. No, no, really, it's gone this time. We promise. I was on Twitter before. I'm not. I was joking. It's not like that was the first one that I used or something like that. But I specifically remember getting invited from somebody from a tech blog because I asked him, and I was like, "Whoa, this is so cool!" And then I also separately remember commenting on somebody else's thing and being like, "This is a terrible idea." And then he found my posts and went and commented on one of my things and was like. <laughs> This is a stupid idea too. And I was like, cool, dude, you have a hundred thousand I don't know. I got trolled by some <laughs> famous person on Google Plus like in the first couple of months. But uh, I can see it making sense in an organization. And I guess I think the thing I was basically put this in here to make fun of it as well. But now that I'm seeing it, it is something for G Suite. And if you're already paying for that and you don't want to pay for Slack or something like that, I was I just heard on a podcast today somebody saying Slack is one of their biggest expenses podcast network. So when you have lots of hosts, you have lots of people you have to pay for and things like that. So maybe it won't immediately die on the vine. But um, also, Currents was, it's been used before. There was a magazine app that they had. So that's a little reuse of the name there. But it'll be kind of fascinating. I don't know. I don't see myself using this because I don't work in an, inside an organization. But the whole circles concept that was originally part of Google Plus pretty much makes a lot of clear sense in an organization. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. kind of fascinating. And I think that that this is... I, I still like that circles idea. I wish that others would adopt that because right now, when I think about different social media networks, social networks, uh, on Facebook, 
you, there's not an easy way to set up that. I want to make a post, but I want it to go to these specific people. And I know there is a way to do that, to be clear. Mm -hmm. There's not an easy way to do that. I go in and I have to say, show this post to everyone, but, and then I have to type in the search terms for, oh, I don't want aunt Louisa to see this post. Uh, great aunt. Hmm. Courtney is racist, so I don't want her to see this post. Like those, all of those issues obviously um, are there, but they're not easy to use. And on Twitter, everybody sees everything uh, unless you make your account private account private. And then that's a whole nother thing on Instagram. Everybody sees everything unless you make your account private, but that makes you not. I loved the circles concept and I think that that was great. And I do wish that other social networks would give us the ability to more easily choose who we share what with and how. Um, so I don't know that that is one thing that I will give Google plus credit for, I guess, is that that was a neat idea. And yeah, I agree with you that that works really well in terms of the enterprise, uh, where I can imagine, you know, we've got different groups of people. We've got producers at Twit. We've got engineers at Twit. We've got hosts yeah. at Twit. We've got this team at Twit. You know what I mean? And so, oh, I just, I want to make this post, but it goes to marketing and marketing has a conversation about this thing, or this is for hosts and engineers to see and you can have a conversation there. That's pretty smart. But maybe I will adapt my, because I've got, I mean, you and I both have G Suite accounts uh, for personal, our personal stuff. Now I want to know if I can adapt my like access to Google circles. Plus. Yeah, to make a little private social network of my own that I can <laughs> invite friends to, I wonder. But I, no, because then I'd have to buy accounts for everybody. So that wouldn't work. Yeah. Only G Suite, ah, all your entrepreneur friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, <laughs> exactly. Well, if you want, I could forward this to Leo, and then you guys could be, get sucked into Google Currents. So, oh my goodness, <laughs> the currents—they're taking us away. Well, yeah. Again, I no, I just didn't even eat. realize I was making a pun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I just want to eat currents. Um, let's talk about uh, the Google Store's daily special deals. Yeah, this is kind of a funny thing also because of the meta story around that, but I'll get it in, into it just for a second. They have a, a classic assistant brand celebrity commercial to reveal a new feature, gen generic <laughs> model, because apparently that's how you do it. It's put celebrities in the commercial, but Fred Ed Armisen is doing a Google a commercial for Google to get their daily special series for every day for the next month. But I guess that's not even really the most interesting part. I thought it was funny because basically last week, Google is like, we're going to have something special for you on Monday. And we'll talk about it in a second with our main story from last week. But Google was like, here's a new Hey G event for the smart home stuff. And both of them kind of feel like it wasn't worth in a whole of like a whole big deal. I don't know. <laughs> they like are but last week even there was pretty much product shots from a new Google Home speaker leaked and it's a brand new thing. And then days later, <laughs> Google <laughs> like we have something special coming on Monday and then it's a month of sales. And I was like, What? Okay, I guess. I don't I don't know what's happening. <laughs> They they needed I.O., I think, but <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of all over the place. But if you want to get Google Home stuff over the next month, I guess you can. So there you go. Just an interesting little promotion. <laughs> I kind of want one of the, the Google uh, Home, Google Nest Hub Max things. Yeah. I really do. Because the everybody who calls, has yeah. one, well, not even the video calls for me. It's just that. Everybody who has one talks about how great of a digital uh, picture frame it is. And f I love that idea of having a beautiful digital picture frame uh, in my living room that I can, you know, have as the display for my photos and things. Yeah, okay, Braggs, Sir Braggs a lot. I, I'm in the background. I, the cord's plugged in so I can't pull it forward, but got my little Nest Hub right here. Yeah. Do you have the Nest Hub <laughs> Max or the Nest Hub? No, just the original one. Uh, I gotcha. think it was on a discount at some point, and I don't think they even had the Max at the time. But I mean, oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. 
video call stuff sounds interesting. That would make sense right on the desk. And they do have the whole like gesture stuff. So that's kind of cool for the kitchen. You don't have to yell at the screen or touch it with messy hands or something like that. So, and maybe we'll get Netflix on them eventually. It could actually be a solid time. And it, so it, it's until September 6th. So yeah, check it out. Hmm. If you're, uh, if you're right. into the Google stuff, I should, I should say. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, let's move on to talk about what we talked about earlier last week, uh, on Wednesday of last week as the crow flies. I don't know why I say that. That doesn't make any sense, but I just kind of like how it sounds. <laughs> um, on Wednesday of last week, Google had its virtual, uh, Hey G smart home event, smart home summit. And, uh, you and I covered the event live and it was really a developer focused event, uh, that covered kind of what was coming from Google slash has already come from Google, but it was in the works. It, mm -hmm. it was a part of IO that was going to be a part of IO, but then it was broken out into its own event. And so it kind of went pretty quick and it was very well, uh, well, I guess I was going to say it was it was efficient, but then I remember that it started 15 minutes late. So I can't really <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't really call it that. Anyway, point is they got out the stuff that they needed to get out and then made it easy to uh, see the other videos and content on demand. And it basically gave an overall look at what um, new device types and new um, protocols and new stuff was coming to uh, Google Home and how developers could make use of the Google Assistant for controlling those devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a, the Hey G part was an interesting, that's how Google says it at least. So maybe we can just go with that now because that is, it's always confusing what, which way to say it. But I do think I, maybe was just spoiled by how excellent we are at covering this news on the show because a lot of this stuff we've talked about over the last three months. So it was like, or the thing that we just talked about last week with the shed support for Google assistant stuff with getting more smart home entertainment devices set up with actual routines and things like that. I do think the major news was the expansion of routines and, um, being able to have presence detection. So I guess I just didn't realize that you didn't already have that if you um, were using Google Assistant and stuff. It does work with Nest, so maybe that was where I got confused. But now when people will be able to have routines that are work depending on whether or not they're at home or react to them getting home. So that'll be interesting. And that's also not announced just yet. I think that's what was just sort of odd. It's it was like the past four months and the next four months of announcements all combined into one. But um, so, yeah, the, another thing they were talking about was on Android 11, they'll have smart home controls. So more baked into so, sort of the ways that you can jump into those devices, kind of like how HomeKit stuff is in Control Center on iOS and also the ability to jump into apps to authenticate in a much more seamless way. Um, immediately without having to then just go sign in and things like that. So just using your Google account, it's kind of how in general you can sign into things using a Google account across the a device. Um, let's see what else, I guess the, the app flip thing that was part of that. Um, and we also covered the state reporting and reliability part, which is just mm -hmm. making sure that these are staying in connection and whether it's on or not. And it does make sense. It's, I could see now that I'm saying this all together, they've like set the stage for just improved routines. I think in a smarter way that interact with multiple devices because people are getting more and more smart home stuff all the time. And I think a big theme they talked about up at the top too was just the home is very important right now and was, is more so than ever before. Um, some interesting stats. Um, let me see. I think, Oh yeah. So people are using, I, th I thought the stats were actually a little bit low, which I, ex I expected more, but people are using um, their smart home lights more, 15% more. And then 80% um, of homes have one connected TV and 40% of them are using it daily now. So I thought it was kind of just interesting. There's definitely obviously a bump when most people are at home all the time, but 
I guess they're not into as as into smart home stuff as Netflix or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty yeah. it was an interesting event. Like, I mean, uh, I guess the other big thing is they're making they're doing the major transition to works with Google Assistant. And so they're providing long term support for works with Nest partners, but they're kind of just like, that's it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So the works with Google stuff, I think is, or works with, Hey G stuff is, is fascinating. Um, as opposed to calling it the Google assistant, because I think it brings it more in line. It feels a little bit more pr- approachable works with the Google assistant is very robotic and strange. Whereas works with AliXA, um, feels a little bit better. And then I guess that, you know, Apple could take a page out of this playbook because currently it's works with Apple home kit. It used to be home kit enabled was the badge. Uh, now it's works with Apple home kit. That feels a little bit less approachable when people kind of think of things as, can I use my smart assist? Can I use my uh, phone? person to do the talking, uh, to control these things. So works with, Hey G makes sense. I, I feel as a way to, uh, address the approachability of these kinds of, uh, smart systems. Um, yeah, it makes I, sense. I like that Especially, better, Um, yeah, the Google nine to five has a Google or a comparison sheet of all the different brands. And there is a little thing about, HomeKit always means Siri integration, but Siri integration doesn't always mean HomeKit shortcuts and stuff like that, which is, that's one core thing that I'm dealing with is in shortcuts, the automations tab shows you your personal automations and your HomeKit automate or your home automations. The home automations can't interact with the personal stuff or any of the apps on your device. So a lot of people do get confused that it seems like it should work with HomeKit, but it doesn't. And uh, it's, it's, I guess it's not technically my mess, <laughs> even though it's still kind of is because people ask <laughs> me about like it, it yeah. but, um, yeah, the whole, I mean, what you were saying about approachability too, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Um, even just on my own website, I've been putting up more shortcuts and I realized that I should say add to Siri instead of get the shortcut because when you see a shortcut in apps and things like that, it's an add to Siri button. And so it is, that's how people think of it is even though generally we say shortcuts and lowercase s shortcuts for the individual tools, they're Siri shortcuts. And so works with Hey G, not Google assistant does make sense. So probably good transition there. Start seeing that on all of our product boxes. Now, I guess all those are out of date now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, but everybody who's uh, who does package design is like, oh, great. We got to start over with this. Uh, no, I think in the end, this is going to be a good thing for sure. Um, any other stuff? You know, we talked a little bit about uh, Project Connected Home over IP uh, and how this is meant to be the future. On Tech News Weekly, we brought Stacey Higginbotham on to talk about the Uh, Hey G event. And one of the things that she said was she kind of wanted to hear more about Project Connected Home over IP. It feels as if they keep kind of pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back and saying, oh yeah, we're working on it. It's something that's going to happen. These are all the companies that are working along with it. But no real stuff has happened in, uh, in the scheme of things. And we haven't seen sort of the drafts of the protocol and that, that kind of stuff. So we're a little bit out from the allegedly universal protocol for all devices to use and communicate. And it's not clear exactly what it's going to look like and what it truly means. Is it going to be that I can say, Hey G or Hey S I R I or, um, A L E X A and then tell the device to do a thing. And no matter where I get it from, it will then work with that as long as it's, uh, using project connected home over IP or is it going to still be broken down into these individual, uh, you know, yards, these individual gardens, and it will still require, you know, looking for that badge. So there's a yeah. lot more there, but we're not there yet, unfortunately. They did say, um, I just remembered this because I remember checking out the page when it first came out that there's not going to be a spec for that until 
the the working group has a goal to release a draft spec and a preliminary reference open source implementation in late 2020. So I guess it's just probably towards the end of the year and pretty sure also there might have been some wrenches thrown in their plans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't exactly yeah. meet up or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure something like this would be digital anyways, but still these are very, when there's this many logos involved at once, that kind of stuff goes very slow. So hopefully we'll see it not right at the end of the year, but also they did set the expectation. So that's, it makes sense. We'll learn more about it later. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it whenever we do get it. Uh, Let's go ahead and move on to our picks of the week. And it starts with you, Matthew. Oh, wait, did Mm -hmm. you have one more? Uh, No, it's okay. Okay. It was just like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that is yours. Got oh, it. Oh, sorry. Should I should I be more clear? Um, yeah, there's yeah, a new app called <laughs> There's a new app called Mm-hmm that um is in beta, so I haven't actually played around with it, but I think it kind of it's an interesting I don't know, the the release I think did very well because it was one of those times where somebody puts out a very simple video. It does help that it is the former CEO of Evernote, but he just walks people through a whole little demo of how this app works. It's a screen recording type um, device, but kind of like what Mike and I use Ecamm to do streaming type stuff or have like virtual effects on screen, but it's basically made for presenting and hooking into Zoom and things like that. And it's it's got great branding and I think pretty simple features where you can pull yourself off to the side or show something in the background while you're still on screen and just a pretty simple set of tools to make your make uh, what do they say it's it's your show like make yourself look more personal performance type of thing and have fun while you're doing your meetings and not just have it be a recording of you going through a slide deck so I'm, kind of a, I'm waiting on my my uh, invite, especially given that we actually had the creator, uh, Phil, on uh, this week in ooh. tech on Sunday. So yesterday, Leo had him on uh, cool. the Twitch show. <laughs> yeah. And cinema, so he came on. And they, yeah. He came on and talked about uh, the mm-hmm app. And uh, I, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to giving it a go whenever uh, I eventually get my beta invite. Maybe I should have used my at twit.tv email. That's probably the problem. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll have to uh, to it's, it's super cool. I think this is great. Yeah, you should absolutely check out the video that shows you a little bit more about it. Um, it's still in its early days, of course, and it's in, in beta right now. But uh, from what I saw in the email, unless something goes wrong, they said they'll be rolling this out uh, by the end of this month, it is clear to me that it is akin to uh, Ecamm Live or the uh, Snapchat camera yeah. app in the sense that it is a virtual camera application. It routes the video into it. You can do things to that video. And then from there, that gets routed into uh, whichever application you know, you're know you using, like Zoom. And so, yeah, I think this is a super cool idea and I'm looking forward to trying it. And I'm looking forward. You do live streams far more mm-hmm. often than I ever do. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you make use of it in those live streams. That should be fun. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I assume it'll work with them. But I think it is it, like their whole about page is like we all are just now squares in a box to each other when you're communicating over streams and the whole like can you see my screen? Can, Oh, is it sharing now? Let me share my screen. Things can just get pretty intense. So when it's just your feed being piped in and you can adjust it and add some personality and still, I think what's like Snapchat's thing is kind of novelty. And this is actually a business tool as well, just for presenting or sharing stuff with each other and just with your friends. So it'll be interesting. It's kind of a, kind of a cool product. What's your pick? Yeah. Uh, my pick is this new incredible idea uh, from Skosh. It's called the Skosh Base Links Modular Charging Station. And hold on one sec. Uh, for folks who are tuning in via audio, this may be the time whenever you go check out the video, but you don't have to. Um, I am talking about Skosh said, you know what? 
Sometimes you want to charge multiple devices at once, and maybe you don't want to have nine different plugs and nine different devices to do that. Maybe you just want to have one place where the whole family can drop all of their devices and charge them very easily. So what Skosh did was create a modular charging station. Now, I'm showing one piece of it. Uh, this has a place to drop a wireless charging device, so it's, it's Qi enabled. And so you can drop a phone here and it'll start charging. And then here is a charging station that lets you sl slide in, you know, an iPad uh, or a, an iPhone or some other device. And then there are three uh, charging spots on the back. There's USB-A and a USB-C with power delivery in the middle. And so you can plug in a cord into each of those, plug it into the device that's sitting uh, in one of these slots, and then charge it that way. And this one also comes with, on the end, another power delivery uh, over USB-C and a USB-A port. But it gets better. I can take this apart so it, it comes wow. apart like so. You just split the charger in half. <laughs> I split the charger in half. And then, oh, what's this here? Uh, it's an Apple Watch charger. Uh -huh. And I can click that into place. And then I can put it back together. And now I've got an That's Apple Watch cool. charger that lifts up like so. So it can be either down or up. A wireless charger and a spot to slide in my uh, you know, iPad or what have you. Well, one wireless charger is fine. But what if I've got multiple people in my family <laughs> that have uh, phones that can be wirelessly charged? I think I'll slide in another wireless charger right next to that. So now I've got a spot for an iPhone, an iPhone or AirPods, my watch and the iPads or what have you. And then hmm. if you happen to, you could take it apart again and slide in one more wireless charger. <laughs> <Dear God. laughs> so then you've got a spot for two iPhones, a pair of AirPods that wirelessly charge or whatever device you might have that wirelessly charges, an Apple Watch and the spot where you can drop in uh, iPads or, or whatever you want to sit vertically in these locations. Uh, it's essentially... What what I you know mentioned in the beginning, it is a modular uh, charging hmm. device that lets you add as many of these different charging. Well, not as many. It lets you add charging stations to the overall setup. Um, it uses a very clever point system. So as you buy more of the uh, little chargers, the modules, I guess is what they call they call them. As you buy more of the modules, each of them has a point, and then one whole charging station can only have so many points. So that's how you know, you know, how many things can I actually connect to this one device, and it will still charge all my devices. It uses uh, the point system to help you figure that out. So. If you're looking for a way to sort of give a spot for your whole family to drop on their phones or uh, connect, you know, your Apple Watch and a couple of other devices uh, and have some, in this case, the end cap charger there to to link up other things in charge and you want to adjust it however you want this base links is is the way to do so. Uh, you can buy the the basic kit. Um, in black from Skosh uh, on Am or on Amazon for a hundred bucks, but you can also get it exclusively from Apple's own store in white. So if white is more uh -huh. your thing, uh, <laughs> if you go to Apple's online store, then you can get it there. Um, one of the things that I really dig about this is that the rubberized circle where you drop your phone, it is very. Um, I guess grabby is the best way to put it, mm -hmm. grabby rubber. And so I've noticed that, you know, dropping my phone on one of those spots, it stays put and immediately, you know, it's locked in place there where I need it. Um, so it, you don't have a lot of guesswork about making sure that it's placed exactly how you want. It is, you know, where you want it, how you want it, and uh, perfectly placed. So this is a... I just think it's a brilliant idea that they've come up with where you can have your setup exactly as you need for the devices that you have. And then that clever point system to say, okay, 
how, what, what exactly can I get with just one plug into my wall? Which devices do I need? And so Skosh provides that information as well to help you yeah. figure out your setup that works perfectly for you. And then because each of the, um, each of the little systems, each of the modules, uh, come with a cord, then in, if I wanted to, and they come with an end cap as well, then I could set up two different systems. I could have downstairs, say, a system that has, you know, the the iPad charger and one wireless charger. And then it, there's an, I have extra end caps. So I could put an end cap here and then have that downstairs. And then one of the cords in the module boxes to plug that in. And then <laughs> upstairs, I've got a place for two wireless chargers and uh, the Apple Watch charger, as well as the, the power delivery end cap uh, for charging something else. So it's endlessly adjustable, even if you just wanted to have a spot that's got one of these modules plugged in, then you can do that as well. So yeah, oh, nice. that, I, I kind of like that there's a lot of freedom to it. I can separate it out however I want to. And because of the way that the system is set up, it's got the proper end caps and cords that you need, no matter how you choose to link it together. This honestly also sounds very good for developers because I always see developers talking about how they have many old test devices to test for different versions and they have to keep them plugged in and have a million cables all over the place. Yes. And, and in theory, too, they don't need to be... Like one thing I think, it it's it will distribute the charges. So this is probably better for something like overnight charging as opposed to you can't fast charge all of your devices at once right. off of one cord. Um, but just keeping things topped up or like stacked up and ready to go like a production studio type of thing. Even schools, honest. I mean, I guess maybe mm -hmm. less so they, they usually have de dedicated stuff for that, but it's kind of like a, for anyone who's listening is the uh, like magazine rack. They're just short little nubbins, but then you can stack the iPads vertically. And then I mean, it looks like the cord that comes with it. Is it only just like six inches long so that it wraps around nicely into the back of the phone without, you don't so have the, three no, feet those, of cord hanging off. <laughs> those cords you you supply yourself. The cord oh, okay. that it comes with is just to power the device. So yeah, you do need to provide your own cord to plug in. Uh, but yeah, you could get those little short cords if you wanted to. Uh, but I've found you know it, it. This I sit on the edge of a table, and so the cord just hangs over the back. I don't see it anyway. Uh, but I've got an iPhone here that's dropped in. But as I said, you could drop an iPad in as well. Um, I would drop my iPad yeah, in, but it's I might in a place where I can. need something like that because I have yeah. like enough devices <laughs> in the in the realm to at warrant least. it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, very, yeah, super cool system. I think from uh, Skosh, and like I said, you can you can get started uh, for one hundred dollars and then go from there. The one hundred dollar kit I think comes with is it three modules. Um, yeah, it looks like you get uh, – it, it's either two or three uh, – two modules. So you can get the wireless charging pad and then the um, the module that lets you stack three devices next to one another. Uh, and then there are several different sort of starting kits that you can get. So if that doesn't seem to be the one that you want to go with, uh, you can try – you can – check out another one of the starting kits that's available that will let you have, you know, an Apple watch charger, for example, or as I mentioned, that in cap that provides more power to it. So yeah, check it out. Uh, loads of different ways to configure your own system to provide vertical charging, Qi charging and Apple watch charging with Skosh. Ah, folks, we have reached the end of another episode of Smart Tech Today. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to the show, we would appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed, you just head to twit.tv slash STT. That is where you can go to subscribe to the show in its various formats, be it video, audio, and whether you're watching on YouTube, Google Podcasts, uh, wherever you happen to go, or whatever app you happen to use to do so, that's where you go to do that. We record the show live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 2300 UTC. So if you want to, you can tune in live, twit.tv slash live or twitch.tv slash twit. And uh, Matthew, if folks want to follow you online, where do they go to do so? Uh, you should go to matthewcastanelli.com because I am launching something big there soon, I'd say. 
And then also I'm going to be on Renee Ritchie's YouTube channel tomorrow. So that'll be fun. Oh, exciting. Exciting. So lots Mm -hmm. of places to go to look out for you. Uh, You can follow me at Micah Sargent on all of the social media networks or head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee where I've got links to the different places I am online. Uh, That will do it for us this week. So it is time, folks, to say goodnight to all your smart assistants. Hey, G. Good night. Good night, everyone. 